will and axle example. So I'm going to be finding distance of my effort. I'll also be finding distance of my resistance. I'll need the force of the effort and force of the resistance for this problem. Alright, so my distance of my effort is going to be where the effort is put and I know that it's going to be on the rim of the wheel. So it tells me here that the wheel is three feet. Let's say three feet. My distance of my resistance then is going to be the axle, which is six inches. I'm going to go ahead and convert that to feet now. All right, so my force of my effort is what I'm trying to find out. And it tells me that I'm lifting a force of 75 pounds for 20 feet. All right, so we're going to assume here that AMA equals IMA. Sometimes we have to assume that to solve our math. So I know then that my force of my resistance, which is 75 pounds, divided by X equals my distance of my effort, which is 3 foot over 0 0.5 feet. All right, so we look at this 20 feet. Do I need to actually put this 20 feet into my equation? All right, so my IMA turns into a ratio. All right, so 3 feet divided by 0 0.5 feet is going to give me 6. So that means that there is a ratio of a 6 to 1. So my wheel is going to go around 6 times before my axle has moved the same distance as one time for the circumference of that wheel. So my ratio isn't going to change. It really doesn't matter if I'm looking at 20 feet because we're still looking at that same ratio of this 6 IMA. So all I have to do is just plug it into AMA equals IMA and really this is just some extra information that I don't have to use. All right? so then I say 75 pounds times 0 0.5 and then divided by 3 feet. Okay, my feet are going to be canceling out and I will have 12.5 pounds. Alright, so now it's time to see what I can find in the kitchen. In the kitchen here is another great example of a simple machine. We're looking at the wheel and axle. In this one, I'm going to be looking at this knob. The knob itself is your wheel. So if I turn, I can turn it on easily. But if I take it off, we're looking at just the axle, and I try to turn just the axle, it's very difficult, and I actually cannot get it to turn on. If you've ever had one of these break off, a lot of times people will go and get some pliers to be able to turn it on. Again, we're increasing our mechanical advantage by doing that. Okay. So now, whenever we're looking at our ideal mechanical advantage, let's start by measuring the axle. So we're going to use... I'm going to start here at the 1, like I have in the past. It's not very easy to see here. It's not uh, focusing very well. But that is one, two, three. It's three eighths of an inch. Right, so the diameter of my axle is three eighths of an inch. Now I put the knob back on. Okay, that's my wheel. So the wheel, I was using my effort here. So let's find our diameter of our wheel by just using the le the actual uh, raised area. Okay, let's see if I can get a good look at this. Okay, and that is one and five-eighths of an inch. Okay, so one and five-eighths of an inch. So now I can find by using those diameters, I can find my ideal mechanical advantage. Okay, so IMA 
equals DE over DR which equals 1 and 5 eighths over 3 eighths of an inch. I'm going to simplify that to 1.625 inch over 0 0.375 inches. My inches are going to cancel out and that equals 4.33. So my ideal and mechanical advantage is 4.33. So now it's your turn to go to the lab and build the example of the will and axle.